lose this one after losing game one. That's Jonsson, Caroline Jonsson. You couldn't really fault her that much in game one. Three outstanding goals beat her. She made some big saves to keep her side in the game. Pretty early. Our lineup for Sweden brought to you by Adidas. And for Sweden, the key player to keep your eye on is number six, Marlene Mostrom. She actually did not play make very well against the U.S. because Shannon Box had such a terrific match. But if, if the Swedish team is successful, she will be on trying to support her front runners. Jean Guiri is the goalkeeper who will start her second straight game for North Korea, whose lineup is being brought to you by Hyundai. And number 10, Pyo Hui Jin is key for this team. She scored two goals in the opening match. Very experienced, 76 caps for her side. On the referee's whistle, we are underway with Sweden in the yellow and blue, and North Korea in red. And they're trying to play it up this flank, and it'll go out of play. We have throwing coming up immediately for Sweden. From this near side, Anna Markland. Give it away, and out again. Another quick throw in for Sweden. Opening seconds of this one from Philadelphia. Markland's toss in again. And for the third time, it's knocked out of play. This time, though, North Korea will have it. It'll be there, throw it from the near sideline. Intended target, it comes back from Anderson and knocked away again. Could be a slow start to this one with the teams feeling each other out. Either side really in a position to lose North Korea in a better position if they don't get a result because they won game one. And Sweden's, Sweden's bats are definitely up against the wall here. A lot of pressure on them. They historically have not performed well in the World Cup. Bit of a disappointment in the past World Cup, so they want to try and get some points in today's match. Bring you the people from this World Cup without interruption. Sweden has to get up on the left side of the field. Turned away by Hornfist. And that foul's going to be called a high old tournament. Tunnel with Berg. Certainly Sweden is expecting a big game from Berg, working in tandem with Victoria Svensson.
chipped up ahead by Waterstrom. It's headed for Spencer. Spencer looking. And that's going to be clear away. I kind of like the way Sweden has come out of this game and attacked. I thought they might sit back a little bit, feel each other out, but they're going for it. Well, one of the things we're wondering about is how, how psychologically tough was this for Sweden to lose the first game against the U.S. And we should point out that although the score was 3-1, to one, it was a much tighter game than that. There was definitely times in the match where Sweden had the run of play. And the U.S. actually scored the clincher, the third goal, against the run of play. Kind of put the nail in the coffin for Sweden. But again, just they're a fantastic team, and they're probably not going to change too much tonight. They're just going to try and get a little bit more success out of the high low high, which we talked about with Bushton supporting her two front runners. Bing, 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 and that's the way they like to get in. These two teams do not have a long history. Only the one match that was played, the player down on the field was the one that scored the game-winning goal. Berg, and boy, she taking some hits. Second straight game for her. Lumberg's going to go up tough here. Just gets elbowed, it looks like, in the back of the head there. She was a lone woman in the first match, and some people believe that when Brianna Scurry came out and hit her a little bit out of the box there, that might have kind of taken her off the court game and think a little bit. So, North Korea may have scouted that.
and make a save there. You, Jippy, you mentioned the two North Korean players pressing down on her, so she comes out and dominates her bounce. Parker Strong with the long clearance. USA scouting reports said that they got game one. Wendy, that's move ball quickly, get it to those front runners. They're doing it this game. Absolutely, they are. And in doing that, they're stretching North Korea a little bit.
show. Look at him just dancing here. Really, North Korea doesn't have a player stepping up on him quick enough. They've got numbers up in the back. Murphy, too. Sweden's playing the two front, and they have a chance of defending with this two foul. Sweden plays it long. Svensson, one to have that down. She had a little bit right there. Hustrum. Sweden played better in the second half, and she pushed forward. There's a knock into space. Heading for Lundborg. Well, they're getting numbers back, Wendy Sweden, and they're getting numbers forward. Well, they are just playing a lot of hard as well. They know that their backs are up against the wall, and they've got to come out here this time in this match. Of course, Marika Domaski is here for us. Won the 2001 Algarve Cup, and she's been a head coach of this team since 1996. Wide open and North Korea fell for it. JP, she's so eager and she's so excited. Really, she just needed to redirect it. She doesn't need to get a lot of power on it. The ball's coming in with some pace. Just go ahead and redirect it. You see if she even had that near, near post wide open. She would have been able to finish in that near post. That was a different look on a corner kick from Sweden and it nearly worked. Bird will make it Fagerstrom on the left, giving it up for Larson. North Korea getting it back. That was handled right at the halfway line by Fagerstrom getting her second straight start in this World Cup. A member of the World Cup 99 squad. Ten of the 20 who play for Sweden played in the last World Cup that was also held here in the United States. Molly and Anderson, one of them, playing it to the right. The push up from Mostrom. Mostrom getting it back. Back and forth with Svensson. And now it's knocked out of play. Different game today for Hanna Lundborg. She's definitely been a factor. Well, in the first match for Sweden against the U.S., she didn't shake her knocks off. But this game she has so far. She took a couple knocks early, but now she's showing what she's all about. Playing with a ton of confidence in and around the box and getting her shots off. There was some speculation how she would be today. She said physically she felt strong and was going to go. Tough to keep her out of the lineup. Right side, North Korea will move it to the halfway line. This is such a different game, Wendy, for North Korea than we saw on the weekend against Nigeria, where they had so much possession. Ri Song Dun's team couldn't have played any better unless they finished better, as we talked about before. But in that Nigeria game, they had all kinds of space, not tonight. Well, they did, and it was a bit of a disappointment that they didn't finish better because they certainly got their chances. That may haunt them today that they didn't have that focus in the first match. Here is the chance on the left side. It's pulled back, and a takedown, and a penalty kick is going to be called for. How unfortunate there for Sweden. The referee has the flag up. The referee's assistant on the other side. So let's see what they do now. Wave it off, apparently. So Sweden was no longer unfortunate, very fortunate. And this was waved off because of, an, Kevin, because of an offsides call. Excuse me. And there you see the, the PK call. And really, Sweden got away with one there. Of course, early on, they organized well. Caught the North Koreans offsides. And I don't agree, actually, that wasn't a trip there at the end. It just looks like the North Korean player there wasn't able to get her footing, but it looked like she was tripped up. Yun was brought down, but Markland got a break when that offside flag went up because the referee did point to the penalty spot. Your referee's from Australia, Tammy Ogston. And she didn't hesitate. She was pointing right at it. Here's Malene Anderson trying to switch it. Armstrong wasn't ready, but in the middle, Sweden will recover. That's a hard challenge, and now North Korea will win it. Up it goes, Kim Young ri turning, finding Young hee Yun. Yun will carry it. Out wide, left side, Kyu Hyu Jin. One of their best scorers, bouncing off Markland and draws the foul. Free kick, North Korea. Caroline Yonsen will check this out. North Korea can be very dangerous here on these. This is very close, about 23 yards from goal. Three in the Swedish wall. There's an opening there. There's a fourth player coming over now. So now, and now she's going to give it that space. So it's three in the wall for Sweden. Kumsuk ready to strike it. A bender, but it's right at Jonsson. Kumrano was looking for a rebound that never came. Jonsson was short-handed. Jonsson has been so strong for Sweden. 
Very solid in the first match here. You see her bobble this ball just a bit, JP, like you mentioned. And Kumaran Oh almost came up for, for a deflection. Jonsson with a long clearance. Svensson, Victoria Svensson will give it up to Fagerstrom. She tries to give it back. Svensson very active and sometimes popping up in the middle, sometimes up top on a flank. The chase is on. It's deflected back for Jonsson, who was Sweden's goalkeeper in the 2000 Olympics. On this right flank, not much room there. Marlene Anderson was over there. It's going to be Sweden's ball, though. Svensson is open, but had to wait for that ball. It allows North Korea to get some numbers back. And knocked out for a goal kick. How about Svensson with 11 touches? She's created four opportunities, and she scored a goal for North Korea without a shot. And we mentioned not a lot of possession, which is really the reason why they're not getting the shots. Sweden's done a good job to really control the tempo thus far in the match. North Korea has not been able to settle down and really get into a good rhythm. And again, Svensson is just really causing this North Korean defense a lot of trouble. She's darting in, in and out everywhere. And combined with Lundberg, they're just tough to stop. Sweden's going to have a throw-in from the far side. Of course, Lee Force has to be much happier with this performance in the first half. And the fact that first side has the lead as well. It's one thing to play well and not get rewarded. They got their reward. North Korea trying to get to this ball on their side of the halfway line. Feeling some pressure. And this game pretty physical as well for Sweden. They took some bumps on Sunday. They're taking some here too. Sylvie Jin, one of the players that this team is counting on. She was in the last World Cup. Part of the youth of this team too. She's only 23. It's a young North Korean squad. This ball played up now and North Korea will send it forward. Markland will hold. Right side Anderson. Headed away by the North Koreans. But again they lose possession. Mostra, nice move to the inside, wanted to cross it, knocked out for a corner kick. And remember what happened in the last one with Svensson wide open. We'll see if Anderson tries the same routine. Molly and Anderson is ready. Right across it goes. Now it's cleared away. Right side, Mostrom. Svensson. Nice moves again. Svensson cut it back. There's Bartley in a turn and get some help. Help is coming, but it's a weak shot. Hornquist leaves it. Larson couldn't get it, but Sweden gets it back. Oostberg right up the middle. And it's stopped easily by Jean Quiré. North Korea defense is getting tested. They are, JP, and I can tell they're very flustered. They don't seem to be playing very well as a unit. They're not organizing very well, and Sweden's just sending numbers in support. Mostro. She'll get it back. Far side, Sweden. Playing with more desperation in their game. They know they can't afford to lose this one with the USA favored to win in the next match against Nigeria. Sweden closes Sunday with Nigeria. Nice tackle by Marco on the near side. Again, Sweden breaks up the play. It'll be a throw in for the North Koreans. Gil Ki Jin. Comes back, held up there. Park Yong Jang trying to go long and Sweden marking up well. Larson had Kunsuk recovered. Long toss by Jonsson. He distributes well. Sweden will play it back and out of the right. Hannah Marklin. She goes long. Lundberg. That was well done. Svensson gave it right back. And Lundberg takes it towards the byline. Hannah Lundberg holding. Couple of step overs. Molly Anderson lays it across and is turned away. Sweden know. They're playing with confidence. They know they can beat North Korea in the air. And that's what they're trying to do. 
Tonight at 9.55 ESPN2, China and Australia, live from Carson, California. China, the runners up in 99, won game one, but by a no, one nothing score over Ghana. Coming back for the ball, North Korea, picking it back up with Chin. They go out wide. But that ball needed to go wider. Cutting inside, though. Yun with a shot blocked by Markland. The pass was off target. Allowed Markland to get back in cover. So North Korea could not use the speed. That's where the USA did well against Sweden was in the flanks. And North Korea has been unable to exploit that here today. Well, they, North Korea has a little more athleticism when you look at Sweden's defense versus the attack for North Korea. But they're not doing a very good job of, of exploiting that. They're a little bit tentative when they do get up and into the Swedish defense. And it's allowing Sweden to have a little bit of extra time to get composed and make the play. Well, knock out of play. It'll be a Sweden throw in. Scores from yesterday, and boy, didn't Brazil look strong. You've got to say, Norway really struggled. Brazil winning it 4-1. to one. Young Marta getting a goal. Now in France on a Pichon goal, 84th minute. A one to nothing win in her game versus South Korea. The four games that were played yesterday, the Canadians rebounded. Charmaine Hooper among the goal scorers there on a penalty kick. That Canada started in Germany. Continues to look strong. A lot of people feel that it could be the USA versus Germany once it gets to the semi-final stage, but there's a long way to go before you get to that matchup. Young Ki Yun play it back. There's nobody really there for North Korea. This pass in his face. Nice play as it turns out. This is Jin looking inside the 18. And then she slowed down. Oh, nice work defensively. And Sweden will win it in the one-on-one -on -one battle. It's played up. Defensive stop by Janet Tornqvist. Victoria Svensson on the right. Wanted to find Lundberger with three North Koreans back there to defend. But that was great one-on-one -on -one defending by Tornqvist at the other end. Well, finally, we saw some of the excellent athleticism by Jin. But then I'll tell you what, Tornquist came over and just made a hugely confident defensive play here because it looked like early on that Jin was going to be able to get in and find his team. Here you say, nice aggressive touch to the end line there. And she looks up, but look, Tornquist is there and makes a huge defensive play. Big time play. Two good plays actually there. Slowing it down initially and then winning it. She slowed it down. Help was coming. Here's Marklin. Into the area. Played it back. Oh, she had an open player. Mostrom. Svensson tried to play it across and it's blocked. Molly Anderson puts it back upstairs. Lundberg was calling for it. And it's caught by the goalkeeper, Jean Dury. Here's another look. This is the, the earlier play where the Koreans got in. Again, we talked about that was a flash of their athleticism that we believe is superior to this athleticism of the Swedish defense. Well, that was going to be called on Sweden. Right near the byline, Yul Free Chin was the one taken down. And quick restart could help North Korea. Doom Sagri couldn't get it. Yun leaves it off. Quick shot is blocked. The shot coming from the 19, Gang Okri. 12 on the ball to Shang. Into the middle, Sin. He was the one change from the starting lineup, replacing Im Soo Young from Game One's lineup. On the turn, that could be a card. I think she had the defender beaten, and that is going to be a card on Sin. Kumok Sin here, providing great pressure on Lundberg, takes her down. Dangerous place here for Sweden to get a free kick. Restart coming for Sweden. As the wall is set up. Molly Anderson will take it. North Korea for the wall. All the players lined up on the opposite side now making their runs. Driven across and North Korea will clear it out. Anderson had some open players. Needed to get a better ball in there. Now this ball floats in, but the keeper's out there. Jean Riri take it.
Cleared back the other way. Got to correct something. They did not give a yellow card on Sin. The referee looked like she was going for the pocket, but didn't officially award it. So just a verbal warning. So Sin got a break. Here's Anderson. Lundberg took a look back. Still is able to receive this pass and lost it at the end as the ball apparently went completely over the sideline. Anna Lundborg, just 24 years of age, a couple of goals in the last World Cup. Only one assist, but no shots against the USA. Young Chang from the last World Cup team throws it in. Sin. Had it up by Mustrom. Spurred left it off. Lost the miss. for Spurred. Collects it. Tenet for Lundberg. She gets clipped again. But no fouls called. Instead, referee says a hey, North Korea throw it. All the way back. This ball goes out of play. Markland will have a throw in for Sweden. North Korea now picking up a little more pressure here with more players trying to get at this and keep Sweden in their own end. Well, it seems like they've weathered a bit of a storm here. Finally getting some possession on the ball. Sure, Coach Leifer is for all this possession and all the chances. Would love to have that extra goal as a cushion here. one nothing. different game if North Korea can get on the board. Well, absolutely, and then let's not forget the uh, no, no PK call, which looked like it was going to be a PK, but Sweden defense cut the North Koreans offside. North Korea had scored on that chance, it would be a different ball game. Then played it back, all the way back from Ree. Five is Sin, played wide to Mi A. Ra. Ra will try the long ball. Hornqvist is there, and apparently she touched it last. Throw in for the North Koreans, deep. 32nd minute. Larson defending. Did well to keep her opponent off the ball. And now it comes up. Svensson can't find it. North Korea back on it. Trying for a quick counter. Putting it in his face. And Fagerstrom comes back. That quickness of play that we saw against Nigeria not really happening here for North Korea. And credit Sweden for part of that. Yun will play it back. Umsuk Ri, the intended target, but there were two players right on her. And now Jonsson hunting it long. Looks for Lundberg. One in the air by North Korea. And then they lose. Fagerstrom in the middle. Malstrom with a quick flick. But Svensson's half of the ball was denied. Going back to the other side. Markland. Back to defend, and Sweden will win it once more out of the back. Long for Svensson. She got held. No, nope, she did the holding, apparently. Lundberg taking a physical pounding on Sunday and taking some lumps today, too. Well, interestingly, on Sunday, she really got beat up a bit here by the U.S. side, taking some knocks, and it took her out of her game. Early on in this match, she was taking some knocks, but she has recovered well, and she's been a big threat for Sweden. One of the players that we talked about before this World Cup started that could make an impact. And certainly Sweden needs her if they're going to advance. Yun in the box looking to cut it back. She gets a corner kick for her side. First corner for the North Koreans. On Swedes, the far side. JP, Swedes are a bit vulnerable on corner kicks. Let's remember that the U.S. had two goals against Sweden on corner kicks. Ra will put it down. Targets in front include Kumar Oak. Now she's moved away from the box with Benson on her. Ra is ready. A drone ball across and Jonsson comes up with that. 25 year old Karine Jonsson in her 45th international appearance gets ready to put the ball back into play. Again, it's a long one. Svensson heads it forward. Good 
35th minute, and Sweden is up. So far, North Korea still without a shot, and Sweden, unlike Sunday, they're winning the aerial battle. Well, I think that's just a tribute to their focus. They know they're up against the wall here. They've got to come out of this match with some points. Probably making a little extra effort to win those second balls as well. We've got a sub getting ready to come in for North Korea. And unless it's an injury, it would seem like there might be a tactical move here. Lundberg played it, Mostrom missed it. Svensson settles, open player, save. Oh, that was shot right at him. Fagerstrom had to do better with that. She was open after all those touches. Sun Wee Ho is the player warming up on the sideline by the fourth official getting ready to come on. So right now, Sweden with a one to nothing lead. Let's get some thoughts on this match from Tisha Hope. Tish. Well, it looks to me like Sweden has come to play. They're, they're all over the field. They're playing well as a unit. They're very mobile up top. I think North Korea is having a tough time staying with them all over the field. I don't know if this substitution is because someone's tired. I mean, they're spending so much time and energy playing defense. It wrecks you out there just running around playing defense. They don't have, they're not having a lot of offense uh, created. So uh, uh, Sweden is doing a great job. They need to keep it up and get this, get this win. JP? Thanks, Tish. Wendy, how do they do this? They look like a different team from Sunday. Well, you know, the interesting thing is, can they do it for 90 minutes? They, their, their legs look pretty fresh. They've recovered. We talked about psychologically, would they be able to recover psychologically from that loss against the U.S.? But when you heard, hear Coach Lafour's talk, she said, we were up against the best team in the world, and they weren't all that disappointed with their results. Sure, they would have liked to get some points, but they know that this is a new game, and they've got to come out refocused and give it their all. Played inside. Kumsa Bree was up there. There was a great chance. Well, as a front runner, you can't get a much better chance than this. You look here. Here's Kumsa Bree just kind of wimping out there. Look, you saw the whole right side of the goal open. She had the goalkeeper committed. Wow, unbelievable. Absolutely misplayed that. Johnson was trapped, too, in no man's land because she thought about coming out, then made the move, and then stopped. This bird will clear it. A change that North Korea made, Sun Hui Ho, who scored three goals in the World Cup qualifying, replaced Yong Hui Yun, who were not aware of any injuries in the North Koreans. So our best guess is that it is a tactical move. North Korea finally has had their first shot of the game. Sweden continuing to knock on that door, but unable to get that second goal. They will have a throw in with Larson. Only goal so far, Victoria Svensson really should have had a second one. Hoops are free. Hard wide. Nice back heel there in North Korea. Have some numbers going forward. It went through the legs of Jin, but there was a foul. And if you're Sweden, you've got to be careful with these fouls around the box and giving the North Koreans free kicks like this. No question about it. This one is going to be at about 23, 24 yards out. Very dangerous territory. Mi Ra over the ball. Swedish wall must back up. This 27-year-old right back gets ready to put it into play. Five in the wall for Sweden. Ra touching it off. I think she confused her own teammate with that one. Ra on the side. Nice run of the byline. Can she cross? She can. Kim Sukri was there, but the ball wasn't high enough. Near side. Played at the top of the box. Oh, what a shot. And that deflected and changed direction. Should be North Korea's second corner. 39th minute. And near the end of this first half, North Korea showing some offensive light. And how quickly the tide turns. North Korea is definitely getting a little bit better at the play here. Finally getting some chances down in Sweden's end. Driven in. And that's going to be cleared out again for another corner. Third one for North Korea. 40th minute now. Sweden still leading on a Stenson goal. And he hope ready to put it back into play. North Korea with an edge in the corners. But only recently headed away by Mostrom. North Korea getting it back. 
on the switch for Rahm. Heads it forward. She'll try to cross again. It's cut inside. The dummy through. Quick shot blocked. Played back again. And another one that second time was Wang Ho Ri, who couldn't get it through. But North Korea haven't looked dangerous at all until we hit about the 37th minute mark. Well, that ball apparently stayed in until the end. Going over the end line for a goal kick. And important here so that Sweden can get some possession here and kind of play with a little patience. On the North Korean side, always discussing those tactics and how they can beat Sweden and find some space. They found more room lately. JP, one of the things that started to work for them is their flank play down the right side. They're really exposing the left side for Sweden. A couple of times we've seen number six, Ra, get in on that right side. Again, here they go down this right side again. This ball is going to go out for another corner kick now. Fourth one. 41st minute. Moments ago, Mia Hamm and company off the bus. They will be playing in the second game, which we'll have for you tonight right here on ESPN2. USA versus Nigeria. 41st minute. North Korea on their fourth corner. Driven across from Sukri. Sweden won that ball in the air, but they're going to give up a throw-in. Second minute. World Cup coverage continuing. We hope you'll keep it here for another Group A matchup right after this. Not a down. Here's North Korea with a chance. A couple of toe pokes in the box, and then one pass too many. They were in. They played it back. Sweden is having trouble clearing the ball out of their box, but the players that are coming up and making the final play are their midfielders and attackers. Two times ago, Lundberg came back, made the final play, and that time, Morstrom came back to help her team out. And it's okay if you're North Korea, if you play a ball back to an open play, but there was more congestion where they were playing the ball. Maybe better to have a longer serve out, maybe to a flank player to serve the ball back in the box. Hall floats it in for Jin. Yu Ho Jin nearly caught up to that ball. Another good opportunity, but North Korea now playing with some confidence that we hadn't seen before because they're having some success here. Before they're doing more defending than attacking. Made off by Kumsukri, and now a ball is played in a space, and there's no one in red near it. Apparently touched last, though, by Sweden, so North Korea will still have possession. North Korea lately has had more of the possession. It has a bit of an edge over Sweden, which is a bit misleading the way this first half has gone. North Korea holding out to Ho, 18 yards away. Played into the middle, Horn Fist will clear. We're on the chase back. Played up by Reed. Ra again. And out it goes for a Sweden throw-in. Nearly 43 minutes gone here in this first half. This is the Sweden team, though, that has come out tonight that we were talking about as one of the favorites in this World Cup. Number five ranked team in the world. And a lot of people gave them a shot to get to the final match. That's how good they thought Sweden was. If you look at the first matchups for both of these teams, Sweden was definitely probably in a better position at the start of this match because of the tough game they had against the U.S. They couldn't come out and take anything for granted. They learned that lesson. North Korea, on the other hand, didn't have as tough a match against Nigeria, so maybe the mental focus wasn't quite there at the beginning. And they only have a few days to get their act together, and then they're playing again. bloomberg has been a bit quiet here. You see her going in against Yon. Again, just a tough battle all day long for her. Forty-fourth minute. Sweden continuing on with a one-goal lead here. Free kick coming up. Coming up on our Canon Halftime Report, Rob Stone and Heather Mitz will talk about some favorites and some challengers in a preview of the USA national team. It's all coming up at the half. Halftime is moments away. Lundberg. Try to play it in the middle. Svensson had not yet begun her run. Settled by Yong-Ri. Mia Ra carrying it. 
This is when they've looked most dangerous when she's led the attack. Almost got that ball through in the air. On this right flank now. Anderson was broken up. That's Marklin. Good one-on-one -on -one play and then the clearance to relieve the pressure. Bloomberg facing goal. Right side, Svensson cutting inside of the defender. Victoria Svensson, nice moves. And in the end, was tackled away from behind by Sin. Sweden still with it though. Svensson will crack it. Nice save, there's a rebound. Mostrum put it upstairs. It looked like she hesitated, maybe thinking back about coming back and defending, not expecting that rebound. The key for Sweden is the play between these three players, Svensson, Lundberg, and Mostrum. And on this last chance, all three of them were involved. There's Svensson taking it in, running with a lot of confidence at the defense. She's a great 1v1 artist. From Svensson, I might do more of that, because every time she's tried to beat somebody in the dribble, she has. On clearance, halfway line. Lundberg, looking up. Hold, number nine. She came on as a sub late in the first half. She'll play along with Kumsa free. And this ball is going to go out of play. We have throw in coming up from North Korea. We're in stoppage time. Ball is cleared away. One of the air by Usberg. North Korea will settle it. Played across by Chang. Sin. To Raw. And Sweden will knock that one away. That's going to do it. First half has come to a close, and Victoria Svensson has been the star of this first half, not just because she scored the goal. A lot of touches. She's created havoc for that North Korean defense. And at halftime, Sweden has a one to nothing lead versus North Korea. ABC and ESPN, the official broadcast partners of FIFA World Cup and Major League Soccer. from Enterprise because having the right car or truck makes all the difference. Sweetheart, your honeydew list just got a little bit longer. Sorry. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. For the journalists who are covering the world's most challenging sporting event for women, Toshiba is supplying PCs to the tournament organizing committee to help them report the news while it's hot. Toshiba, proud to be supporting the FIFA Women's World Cup as official IT partner. Toshiba. Your printing demand soared to tens of thousands of pages a day, and you handled it. But your question was, how well? So you embarked on a search until you found it. A better printing solution from Canon. One that brings a new standard to the production environment. Now, life is good. Yes. It's very good indeed. Be strong. Girls aren't supposed to play soccer. Work hard. You just can't take no for an answer. And fight for your dreams. Bend it like Becca. On the DVD or video Tuesday. It's just a game. Packed with moments that decide championships. It's not just baseball, it's the playoffs. The Division Series begins Tuesday at 1 and 4 on ESPN. The 2004s are coming and all 2003s must go during our Model Year Closeout Super Sale at the all-new Westside Kia in Katy. Pay just $10,495 on new Westside Kia Spectrum. Or pay just $16,495 on new Westside Kia Sedona. And pay just $17,495 on new Westside Kia Sorento. Plus, every Kia comes with a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. So come get your Kia in Katy and stay big during our Model Year Closeout Super Sale at the all-new Westside Kia in Katy. Hi folks, Masters Mac here at Gallery Furniture saying, please realize, please be aware during Gallery Furniture's falling furniture prices super sale this fall, you can save more money than ever before on beautiful bedroom furniture, dining room furniture, fabric and leather upholstered furniture, and please realize, buy $2,000 or better with furniture during our falling furniture prices this sale with your good credit, no interest for 18 months. Wow, no interest for 18 months. Up with the 10 falling furniture prices store-wide. Incredible values, Gallery Furniture saves you money today.
Welcome to the Canon Halftime Report, brought to you by Canon, with thousands of products in one simple idea, giving people know-how. Canon know-how. And welcome back to the Canon Halftime Report. Alongside Heather Mitz, I'm Rob Stone. You know, very few people in this world know the world of women's international soccer better than Team USA. So Heather and I cashed in some favors and had them do our dirty work for us and give you a preview of this year's tournament. We know what a World Cup's like. A World Cup is wide open. Anything can happen. Although as the reigning World Cup champions, the Americans are the favorites, they go into it knowing that their rivals have gotten stronger and the competition more intense. Pressure is a privilege to us and we have a great ability within the group to take these intense situations and, and laugh and enjoy them and, and relish them and, and really embrace them. Norway, oh gosh, that whole game is just going to be in the air and trying to beat them um, to the head balls because they're so strong and dominant in that area. And we have a little rivalry going on between us, so they come and they bring their A game and we try to do the same, so I think it's pretty bitter. Over the years, we've used the Norwegian defense as a model for how we wanted to fight. Germany is just a hard-nosed team, very aggressive, um, got a lot of power and strength, and it's just always a battle against them. Germany is a team that is thinking two steps ahead of you. China is just play at a speed that is a, a different level and uh, it takes a while to adjust to that. Best individual players as a team, every single one of them is so technically sound. The Brazilian women play identical to their men. Combine that with the fact that they have some of the best players in the world. They have no inhibition. They just want to make beautiful things happen. They're just fun to watch. I mean, that's the, probably the biggest problem playing against them is that all of a sudden you like watch them and oh my god, I can't believe they just did that and you just get beat because you're just like in awe of them. As the U.S. women face off, they know they'll have to bring all their talent and experience with them if they want to win the cup once again. There's absolutely one guarantee is that this World Cup will be the most competitive of them all. So the logical question, Heather, who are your favorites? Well, I think we'd have to go with USA and Germany, two of my obvious favorites out of the top four. Norway used to be, but I think I've changed my mind after the game yesterday. Without Hegarisa in this game at all times, this, game, this team is not going to be as productive. A surprise has been Brazil. Obviously, with Bertina going out, I didn't think they were going to be as good with the productive power offensively, but the youngsters have stepped up, and if you give them a little bit of confidence, they get the job done. And it's hard to call Brazil a surprise team. It's just the fact that I don't think people had as high expectations for them coming into this tournament. And no World Cup is complete without a surprise team, and I think North Korea has to be in that little category as well. It'll be a very interesting second half between North Korea and Sweden. We want to remind you that during the FIFA World Cup 2003, Adidas will be giving away an official game ball from every game for your chance to win. Just log on to adidas.com slash ball and enter. Now we slide over to the AFLAC trivia question. And which neighboring nation eliminated Sweden from the Women's World Cup in both 1991 and 99? Your answer when Heather and I return to the Canon Halftime Report. Every few years, the FIFA World Cup needs a communications network that handles anything you oh, throw at it. <laughs> Where do you find a network like that? In the state of Avaya. We built a network that juggles, converts voice and data, and thousands of IP calls a day. That's why the world's largest sporting event called on Avaya Global Services again. We shoot. We score. You win. Reach Avaya, a higher plane of communication. Sixty-eight years of photography experience. Legendary optics. Canon PowerShot digital cameras. Now with the Digic chip for beautiful photographs that happen to be digital. Digital revolutionized photography. We revolutionized digital.
on SportsCenter, why Favre is struggling and how he can turn it around, how Barry will make history this weekend, plus some old mascots never die. SportsCenter, 6 Eastern, ESPN. Next for the red, white, and blue, Nigeria. Big Group A battle coming your way 725 Eastern tonight on ESPN2. Only the third all-time meeting between these two countries. They've also met in Olympic and Women's World Cup play. U.S. women coming up momentarily, taking on Nigeria. We take a look at the Group A standings. And again, we mentioned with the win by the U.S. and a win by North Korea, those two teams would qualify for the quarterfinals. Again, the big story coming out of the U.S. camp, Brandy Chastain unavailable for the first round. Kat Reddick will be in her place, and Kat Reddick talking about her World Cup debut experience. It was definitely more intense. I was, I was shocked to, to feel the crowd um, just shaking, um, you know, when we scored the goal, to feel the passion and intensity of it all was just a lot of fun. It was a lot more than I expected, so it was... You know, very nerve-wracking when I first went out there because I was kind of shocked by the whole um, experience. But it was a lot of fun once I started getting out there and calming down. Reddick, the only non-professional on the U.S. roster, she's just a senior at the University of North Carolina. So what is Reddick's mindset now that she is a starter rather than coming off the bench? Well, obviously last game, I think that she got the jitters out. So this game, she's a starter. She has to be looking forward to this. I'm sure she's so excited for today's game. And Kate Sobrero will probably be playing in the middle tonight. This would be her 99th appearance for the U.S. Women's National Team, so a lot of experience sliding in there for Chas State. Time to wrap up your AFLAC trivia question. Which neighboring nation eliminated Sweden from the 91 and 99 Women's World Cup? Heather, what's the answer? I don't know. It's Norway. It's right there. <laughs> you got to learn how to cheat in this TV world. Norway eliminated Sweden in the 91 semis and the 99 quarterfinals. Second half action coming your way from Philadelphia. Welcome aboard. Please turn off all unapproved electronic devices. The captain expects frequent turbulence, so please remain seated at all times. And we do anticipate a late arrival. Thank you. The Hyundai Santa Fe, with America's best warranty. Ten years, 100,000 miles. When you upgrade your travel plans, you win. Hyundai is an official partner of the FIFA Women's World Cup. Lemonade, Mr. Long? Sure. That'll be $15. For lemonade? Well, you got your $2 basic charge. Pouring extra, seed removal, and you do want it cool. Right, Mr. Long? Sound like your cable company? With Dish Network TV from Radio Shack, you get a 30-day satisfaction guarantee. Digital quality RCA equipment and two rooms with a digital video recorder or three rooms free. Dish Network TV. I bet this isn't the end of your price increases. Radio Shack. Is it or is it not true that you kicked and pummeled the plaintiff in the plain view of over 60,000 witnesses? It's true. And what did you and your malicious co-conspirators do next? We cheered. As this poor, battered soul lay defenseless and deflated. You didn't tell me you cheered. Bud Light, proud sponsor of the U.S. Women's National Team in the FIFA Women's World Cup. We're toast. This Tuesday on Playmakers. He's a drug addict. He's coming to practices loaded. Got to put you into detox. I do not have a drug problem. Playmakers, the hit series, continues Tuesday, 9 p.m. on ESPN. Preceded by last week's episode at 8. Time Warner Digital Cable gives you the power to control movies. My Rangers are gods. They're the Army's most elite fighters. They want to renegade. And deception is their best weapon. They cannot tell you about the other operation. John Travolta. What other operation? And Samuel L. Jackson. What have we got here? The mystery unfolds the moment you order Basic for only $3.95 and control it for up to 24 hours. I control from Time Warner Digital Cable. 
Because you live in this community, you can join Premier America Credit Union, offering everything from savings, checking, auto loans, and mortgages, plus a neighborhood branch that's open Monday through Saturday. You'll receive personal service, great rates, low fees, online banking with free bill pay, thousands of surcharge-free ATMs, and emails which immediately alert you when certain account transactions occur. Join today. Premier America Credit Union. Your money, your future, your choice. ESPN 2's coverage of the 2003 FIFA Women's World Cup is brought to you by MasterCard. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Hyundai, when your car comes with America's best warranty, you win. Hyundai. Bud Light, official beer of the U.S. Women's National Soccer Team. Avaya, a higher plane of communication. And by Time Warner Cable. Now, anything's possible. Waiting for that second game, USA versus Nigeria. For now, game one at halftime, Sweden leads North Korea by the score of one to nothing. The only goal is scored by Victoria Svensson, along with Winnie Gabar Palladino. I'm JP Della Camera. Sweden came out of these two teams with more desperation, certainly at the start of the game. They looked a lot readier at the beginning, and it wasn't really until the end of the second half, end of the first half, that North Korea really started to put some pressure on. But it was Svensson's for Sweden who was able to get herself open time and time again. I think a lot of focus was on Lundberg. And that freed up Swenson. She just was dancing and juking through the defense. And again, she was just tough to stop, finding a lot of great half chances on her shots. Well, no question, she was the top player in the first half of play. Look at the touches. Had four shots, one of them on target, and ended up right behind the goalkeeper. North Korea with just that one shot. Obviously, they must do better. That's where the possession stat, Wendy, is so misleading. They had 56% of the ball, and yet, look where they are. That is very misleading, JP, because we didn't really feel the tempo change until the very end of the first half. We saw North Korea have a great chance that they missed in front of the goal with that header opportunity. And I think that's where a lot of the possession did change in terms of being in their favor. North Korea in red, Sweden in the yellow and blue. If you are just now joining us, Second half is underway. We'll see if there are any changes out there for these two squads. North Korea had to make the one change in the first half, which we assume was for tactical reasons, and they seem to play better after that, actually slightly before they made that change. Johnson will play it up. Let's see what Ri song Dun has done here in the second half. If they don't change personnel, certainly they've got to be concerned with the tactics. This is Ra. Broken up. Fagerstrom going long for Lundberg. No changes at halftime. We've confirmed that. So Sweden still have their three subs that they can use. North Korea just a couple. Spence it up. Lundberg, that was a great idea. On that back heel flick picked off, given away. Fagerstrom took too long to let that one rip. Taken back the other way by North Korea. Playing it across was old. Up for Jin. Advantage call. And now the whistle blows. And play is stopped. And now they're going to let play continue. On that right sideline, North Korea. No room. That's Sarah Larson breaking it up. Larson again. Now it's turned away. And now the referee's coming over. Lagerstrom is the player down. With some tight spaces they're trying to work in here. Fagerstrom gets her knee locked up there. Knocks knees with the North Korean player. Possibly hyperextended it just a bit. And she's trying to shake that off and resume play. Sweden up one to nothing, but it is by no means a safe lead. We almost saw North Korea, even though they had the one shot in that first half, come back and get an equalizer. They're going to restart this with a drop ball, apparently. Barbara Strong, now she's just going to give it back to North Korea. This show of sportsmanship. This is Sweden playing it forward, and a quick shot is too high. It was there for Molly and Anderson. And 
and it was Sweden who really converted. Good sportsmanship play there. Sweden knocked it back into the North Korean defense. They couldn't clear it out. And look what ends up happening. Anderson has a good chance here. Just leans back a bit on her shot. She showed up to play this match, JP. We were questioning that in the first match against the United States. North Korea looking to clear it. We'd like to thank Bud Light and all of our sponsors for allowing us to bring you this World Cup match without interruption. This is Svensson. Played it across. She was unselfish. Here's Anderson looking, crossing it back. Headed away by North Korea. Fagerstrom with her right foot. That's blocked. Lundberg let it go for Larson. Good communication. Here is Hannah Lundberg trying to split two defenders with that pass and now must chase and defend. Jin's pass up is broken up and cleared back and it'll go out of play. North Korea has a throw in. Well, Anderson and others have had some chances here to make it two to nothing. And Sweden's got to hope that they can continue to play some good defense because a two to nothing lead for them would be far better than what they have here today. North Korea is still very dangerous. Another throw in for North Korea and they've got another sub up. Sul Yan, who had been a starter in game one. She was playing at the back, so we'll see if that's the next change for the North Koreans as this ball is cleared out of play. Shin is the player that was in her spot, but we don't know if that'll be a straight switch or not. It's interesting, though, to have a sub up, Wendy, after like four or five minutes of this half. You would think maybe there was an injury carried over. They're locked in at halftime. Otherwise, why not make the change at the half? Right, and also a tough position to put yourself in. If you only have one sub left, you never know what, what the second half is going gonna, is gonna to bring. Sweden's going to have a throw in. So far, they're not acknowledging that sub on the bench. She's not over by the fourth official anyway. On the turn, Hornquist. Be lucky if she's not parted for that. She wasn't really playing the ball. More of a tactical foul, but not punished by a card. So they're even on leniency, one each. The wall is backed up, the required 10 yards. the sidelines before they take this free kick from the North Koreans. Chin will push up. Young Young Ri sends it up and that's high and over. So after all that, it's a wasted opportunity for the North Koreans. Here we'll see a replay here. Ri just comes up, strikes it, and leans back just a bit, sending it over the crossbar. Not a bad strike. Just doesn't quite get enough of it. Now North Korea lays it off, looking for a chance the other way. Flag is up. There's the ball was behind the striker, Jin anyway. Second offside call from the North Koreans. North Korea pressing here, really putting Sweden's defense under a little bit of pressure. But there's the offsides player on the right there. Hawk, number 16. Johnson will clear. Coming back for it. It's deflected off a of North Korean. Last pass by Hai Yong Jong. Sarah Larson, player of the 2000 Olympic team for Sweden. She will take this throw in. Pushed forward, but it's cleared away by Ra for North Korea. That was a hit. And now Vestberg will go on the books. The Australian referee says that's enough. And again, just good matchups all over the field. And there we see Vesper playing the player from behind. Not a dangerous spot to be doing that from here, but as the ball gets deeper into her own defensive end, she'll have to be careful about that. Well, I will play it back. Switched across by Sim. On the far side, that's John. And now the North Koreans trying to push numbers up. Sweden are back, though. Count the number of yellow 
jerseys that were back there. There were seven near the edge of their box. Sweden's philosophy has always been you take care of defense first. Individually and good team defense is what they pride their nation in as far as football goes or soccer. A push from Bargerstrom, speaking of football. <laughs> good timing on that comment. Yes, it was. She's just getting a verbal warning. Quick restart for the North Koreans. Out wide to Rom. She's dangerous. Got by Larson, 1v1. Look at Svensson helping out. That's a striker coming back and making a defensive play. The clearance, though, is not a good one. And it's settled by Chun. But now they're forced to go back to North Koreans are, and now they'll try to switch it. A bad ball allows Sweden to come back and counter with Muslim. And that ball goes out for a North Korean throw in. And it's interesting that we talked about team defense. Look at the player here, Svensson, number 11 for Sweden. One of the front runners comes back and makes the play there at the edge of the corner of the six-yard box. Again, they just make a commitment to team defense. There's North Korea. Oh, nice defensive play again. As it's put away by the Swedes. That play was made by Ustberg. He plays it back, and Svensson and Lundberg on the chase. But North Korea have two players back. Picked off by Fagerstrom. Collected away. you got to wonder the way Svensson is playing up and down. Could she go 90 minutes at that pace? certainly not pacing herself in this game. It's all out. Well, it's interesting because both she and Lundberg play the same type of style. No, they're, they're getting a bit of a rest, but they play a, so many sprints. It's amazing how she's coming over to get a little bit of water while North Korea makes the sub. And the sub that they're making, Sin, started in place of In Sul Yun, and that's the switch that they're making. So they have one sub left. Sweden have all three left. We'll see what kind of role Kim Sul Yun has. She brings some experience in. It's a Sweden throw in. And it will be another Sweden throw in from about five yards further up the field. Mark with Passa. Third away by the North Koreans. This was for Kim Jong Ri. Broke it up. Obvious foul in North Korea. And if you give Vestberg a card, I think you're going to give another one out there, too. Double check, I believe it was Chang. And Sweden have a sub up, too. Again, just a foul from behind. Not in dangerous territory, right at the midfield stripe. But that is a call that the referee is going to acknowledge with the yellow card. Chang, number 12, got the yellow card. And Anna Schustrom. Number 17 will check in. She subbed against the United States, replacing Fagerstrom. So some fresh legs out there for Sweden. Svensson, there's a quick shot. That goes up and over. She's a handful to mark. You know, JP, fatigue may be setting in. You mentioned it. Can she run all game long? Here you see a nice chance here. She takes a touch, but she just needs to bounce a little bit more and try and keep it low to the far post. Instead, she leans back, sends it way over the top. Didn't end up being much of a threat at all for the North Korean keeper to handle. That's Rob playing it forward. Some of the players that we talked about at the top, Wendy, Kyu Kyu Chin and Kim Sukri have not really been back this year. He's got to credit Sweden for a lot of that. Been, been pretty quiet, and I think the key organizer in the back has been number three, Tornquist, although she just came over and made a play and gave up a corner kick. Not a situation she wants her defense to face. Now yeah, we'll give it up and get it right back. Nice back and forth, played inside, a quick shot, off the crossbar, North Korea robbed. This is Raw. One shot, here's a second that goes wide. The game of inches should have been a goal. We've seen that North Korea is not so great in the air, so why not keep it down and mix it up a bit? And here you see a beautiful ball going across the face of the goal there. Hits the crossbar. It's an attempt there by Ree. Leans back just a bit. And you know, Jönsson is thanking her crossbar for making that save for her. Best chance that North Korea have had today, and as close as they've come to scoring. Molly and Anderson try to play it long. 
And that's too far on a system will chase it. Looks like Rio is the player that can bring this side back. And North Korea is mixing it up, and here's a chance here. Look at the reaction there. Rio would love to have that chance back. In a lot of cases, JP, it's just technique. It's not the matter of getting a lot of power on it. We saw Svensson try and overpower her shot in the first half. She should have had that goal. Sometimes it's just technique. Keep it on the face of the net. Anderson couldn't get to that ball. Busford can. Floats it up there, but it's going to be stopped by John Curie. We're coming here tonight from Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. A group A match and an important one between these two sides, North Korea and Red and Sweden in the yellow. One to nothing lead for Sweden, along with Wendy Guevara, Paladino, and Tisha Hoke. I'm JP Della Camera. We'll be here again for the second game right after this one. It's the USA versus Nigeria, the other two teams in Group A. Important to this, if Sweden could ever win this and get three points, they'll take on Nigeria Sunday in Columbus, so they'd have a better chance, certainly, to advance. They win here, but they're in deep trouble if they lose here in the USA wins. All played across, and now third away. And more whistles. It's been a physical game. Not necessarily a ton of fouls, but probably more fouls in game two. Upside, Lumberg. There's this bird. In this space, Mostra. Svensson was open. The ball needed to be played closer to her. Mostrum changed the focus of the Sweden attack second half against the USA on Sunday. When she's at her best, she's supporting the two front runners, Lundberg and Svensson, in tight space. North Korea's done a good job to get a body in there to keep her from playmaking from those positions. And on that last chance, you saw her kind of go out wide right to try and mix it up a bit. Anna Lundberg, certainly one of the stars of Sweden. But Svensson has sort of taken over, at least today as the dominant player. Part of that, though, is there's so much attention, as Wendy was saying on Lundberg, that someone like Svensson is taking advantage of more space. It reminds me a lot of, of Mia Hamm for the United States. You know, she loves that she has amazing front runners next to her. In the, in the first game, she had two other players next to her, Wambach and Farlow, in a three front. It took a lot of pressure off her, and she performed, knowing that she not necessarily needs to put the ball in the back of the net, and when she did, she had three assists. USA Nigeria following this game tonight, right here in Philadelphia. The crowd is picking up as we speak. A lot more people coming in now. Here's Svensson. Couldn't get to it. Schuster was chasing it. They're back the other way. Halfway line area. And Tornfist got a touch. Schuster lost it. Going for North Korea. On a Schuster plays for the mayor, the same club team as Hannah Lundborg. Champions last year. Except to be North Korean throw in. Chin on the turn. Looking. Gave it away. Marklin clears. Anna Lundberg coming back for it. For the work right there to try to shake off a defender, and she does with some help. Sweden played it to the wing, and, and that ball stayed in play. They had a chance to get some numbers going forward, and now the last sub is coming in for North Korea. Jong Sun Song, listed as a defender. And she'll come in for Mi Ai Ra. My guess, Wendy, is Mi Ai Ra could be out of gas with all the running that she did in that first half and even here. And remember, in the first half, JP, was the last 10, 15 minutes, they were finding her a lot out wide, and that's really how North Korea was able to expose Sweden. So maybe her legs are a bit tired. Well, 63rd minute, you've burnt all three subs. Certainly not their intent. Down this near sideline, it's going to go out of play. There'll be a goal kick coming up for Sweden. Jung Sun Song, the newest player out there, only her 11th cap, but she's a good goal scorer. Ten games played, seven goals, so that's an offensive-minded 
the substitution. She's listed though as a defender. We'll see where she plays. But right now, no more changes allowed for North Korea. They've used all of their subs. Our game story, Sweden still has shooting North Korea. Possession has pretty much stayed the same. But look at the fouls for Sweden, Wendy. 17-5. to five. Pretty interesting. We knew both sides would come out and play very aggressively. That's what we got in the scouting reports. Very physical. But I'm actually surprised that's not a little bit closer. But again, I think it's, and it has to do with the fact that Sweden's backs are up, up against the wall. We've mentioned they've got to get some points coming out of this match in order to keep themselves alive for a potential quarterfinal game. Svensson comes back for the ball. Puts it forward. Lundberg, that first touch failed there. Chang is able to clear. Oh, Anderson with some showtime for Mostrom. And Mostrom is called for the foul. Korea will play it up the middle. And now to the flank on the right side it comes. That's O playing it up. Larson will clear. Ball cleared in his face towards Svensson. North Korea breaks that up. Tonight at 9.55 ESPN2, China and Australia live from the Home Depot Center, Carson, California. Runners up in 99, China won their first match in Sun Wen. One goal away from tying Michelle Akers for the most goals ever scored in women's World Cup play. She has 11. Akers, who's retired, has 12. Svensson with a good ball. Anderson is open. Let's the shot go, but it was blocked out at the last moment. Looked like she may have hesitated as a corner kick. Third one for Sweden. They're ready to sub again. And John gets over to make a big play. Look at this nice ball by Svensson into the open space. Anderson takes it in full stride. Rips a shot. Number 12, John comes over and makes the defensive play. That was Anderson's last touch. And maybe the hesitation is because she was a tired player. Only listed at 30, but she slowed down a little bit in her third World Cup. It could be an injury, although it's hard to tell in World Cup play. Just like in the men's game, the women and their coaches do hide injuries. But Kristen Bengston now comes in with a lot of experience. 95 and 99 World Cup player. And a former WUSA player as well. Bengston, formerly with the San Diego Spirit and Carolina Courage, gets ready. He's got a pretty good left foot. And it is off the left peg. Misjudged by the keeper. There's still trouble there with Svensson. She couldn't get to it. Loose ball outside of the box in North Korea. Clears, but it's 1v2. And the two win. Markland sat back, though. North Korea attacks. They put a ball in the space. Didn't have a runner close enough to it. Song got nailed. Kept going. For grabs, North Korea sending it forward. Larson with a deflection. Gets another. And a third crack at it. Up for Svensson. Jeffy, I think the momentum is really shifting in North Korea's favor right now. It looks to me like Sweden is really getting fatigued. You know, they had such a tough matchup against the United States. They fought for 90 minutes during that match. And it looks to me like their legs are getting a bit tired. North Korea is starting to spread it wide there using the width and really trying to run the Swedes, and it's starting to work for them. They're getting the, the better of the play at this point. North Korea floating that. Hornfist heads it down for Jonsson. In the 67th minute, Sweden still leading on a goal by Svensson. They should have had at least one or two more in this game, and it could come back and haunt them. Svensson on the ball. Looks to send it across, and it's easily caught by the keeper. Let's get some thoughts from Tisha Ho. Tish. Yeah, just to follow up what Wendy said, you know, I think Korea has taken over the, the momentum of this game. I think there's been a few wasted ch uh, chances on their part. I think in this crucial time of this game against a good team like Sweden, they really need to be able to focus in the boxes. they got to put something away here uh, in order to get, to get this game tied up. JP? And Tish, I agree with you. We're seeing a bit of a of a, a pattern here by North Korea. You know, you have so few chances that you create for yourselves in, in international matches, especially in a World Cup, and they don't seem to be focusing on their chances. They should have had a header goal in the first half, at the end of the first half, and this would be a, a different match. Definitely the momentum has switched in their favor. I, I feel like Sweden's legs are really getting tired. 
probably the reason why they made a couple of switches here in the second half. Song has it blocked away. And the ball will belong to North Korea. They've used all their subs. We're only in the 68th minute. Coach Lee Fors knows the importance of this game because if they get this win and they would be favored to play against Nigeria on Sunday, they could advance from this group despite losing game one. Brought down in the middle by Ung Yong Ri. Ung Suk Ri to Ung Yong Ri and it's broken up. Boston lost it though. Ung Suk Ri plays it off on the turn. That's Chin. They won't let her shoot. Nice defensive work again. Third by Tornquist. Tornquist has made some big plays at the back for Sweden all match long. Bengston. Left sideline. Using the left foot again for Svensson. Nudged, but maintains her balance. Still cruising with the advantage call. Played it across. Not a down. A corner kick. Just when it looks like Svensson may be running out of gas. <laughs> Refuel somehow. And she's had some time to rest her legs a bit, JP, because, like you said, North Korea's really been pressing, but here she sneaks in. She's such a crafty player. Really takes her time to buy, buy some moves, buy some time there, gets the ball across, and it's North Korea having to make a header out. Sweden definitely has the aerial advantage here. They need to go ahead and pop it into the center of the mix there. Larson and Mostrom are up for the Bankston corner. Headed up by Tornquist. And then by Schustrom, that's Hannah Lundberg, headed it forward. Lundberg shot blocked. They're not getting good opportunities. A lot of congestion in front, so Sweden are unable to get these balls through. And back the other way. North Korea lost it on the deflection from Lundberg. This is Svensson letting it rip. Svensson with a shot. That could have, for all intents and purposes, put an end to this one, even with 20 minutes to go. Well, just when we said the tides had turned, now Sweden seems to be turning the tide back in their favor. And it's Svensson, the player that's turning it on. She's kicking it up another notch here. Gets a nice low shot there to the far post. We almost see Ri having to make a big save, but it is shot wide of the post. Svensson again, back on live action. And she couldn't lift that one over Ri. But she's getting so many chances here today. Seven of the 12 Sweden shots have come from Svensson. Mostrom. Try to get it forward to Lundberg. Now it's back for Spurk. Schustrom. Nice move to the outside. And a Schustrom. Lundberg. In deep. Keepers out. She couldn't cross it. She had Svensson open. The credit the goalkeeper for coming out and making that quick reflex play to still keep this a one goal game. Bruce Berg. Did someone turn on a switch for Sweden? I mean, all of a sudden, after North Korea had the momentum, Sweden has come back. It's really been Svensson that has turned, turned the corner here on this North Korean defense, getting a nice shot there. And Lundberg almost getting in, and I really thought that Ri wasn't even going to come on that chance, but she had to to make that play on the near post. Gunsuk Ri will play it up on the left sideline. This time North Korea have five in the attack. The look was coming across for Kumran Oh. And this ball is going to go out of play. And you may see more of that, Wendy, towards the end with North Korea trying to at least get a draw here, sending more players forward, which would leave them vulnerable at the back. And we talked about the subs. Jong Soon Song coming in. She's more of an attacking player, like you mentioned, JP. Seven goals in ten games. That would be another example of North Korea knowing that they've got to push forward now at this point in the match. A little bit of confusion as to where this restart is coming from, and even more confusion. Back a few more yards. have 
a couple days off. They'll be headed for Columbus, Ohio, Columbus Crew Stadium, and back at it again on Sunday. It's not an easy grind here. Three games in seven days for these teams. And JP, you mentioned a couple days off. This is a very short stretch, only two days before the next set of games, and, and maybe we start seeing some uh, some subtle things in lineup changes and things like that as the coaches try and manage their personnel. They've got to manage it for the entire event, not necessarily just game by game. Becomes more of an issue, right, on shorter tournaments like this. Absolutely, and maybe the set for Anderson was one of those examples by Sweden trying to manage manage their personnel. Yeah, with an eye on Sunday. Exactly, trying to rest some legs. And Sweden needs this game. And right now they've got a one-goal lead to show for it. They made a couple of changes. North Korea's made three, and they burnt all their subs by, as I recall, the 62nd, 63rd minute. with the ball, leaving it off, and now playing it back for Song. Song will hold up play. To the back line for John, number 17. She'll play it long. Sweden back to collect it. With a Schuster winning it for Markland. On a Markland playing it up. Headed up by Svensson, cleared by North Korea. Back the other way by Fustberg. And now, once again, North Korea is on it. This is all on the right. Bankston is there. Ball played inside, and it's deflected. Is it a. Well, it's not going to be a corner. It didn't reach it. But it'll be a throw in deep for the North Koreans from the near sideline. Song. Sunday of the USA wrapping up. It's opening round against North Korea on ABC Sports. We hope you'll join us from Columbus, Ohio, 3.30 on ABC. USA and North Korea. Deflection. Comes back and Sweden will play it forward. Schustrom. Up in the air. Won by North Korea again. Sweden picks back up, it's Larson, lost from Supri, but forced the bad pass. Tornquist intercepts, plays it left to Bengston. JP, it seems like every time North Korea gets an ex a chance on the attack, it's number three for Sweden, Tornquist, who comes up and makes a big play. She's had a really solid match, played very well for the Swedish side. She's been a great organizer for her team on defense. I'm not sure if she's been their best defender, but it seems like she's made all the big plays and we're talking about her more. Well, I think she got a little bit exposed in the U.S. match, having to deal with a three front. She's really calmed herself down and had a much better match. And the size of the U.S. players, too, because Tornquist is only 5'7". She was dealing with Carlo and Wambach. Two front runners for North Korea, 5'4 and 5'7". in height. So that is a big difference. Here's Bankston floating it. Jennifer Lundberg, she drew two players to her and allows Spencer to pick it up. Back it comes, Usberg. Mostrom reaching out. Schuster played it across. Mostrom cracked it as black. Lundberg trying to pass on it. Off the post. That close again. Lundberg is giving it everything she has. She's coming to play, no question about it. She plays with so much heart. Here's a chance here, sliding in. Actually, interestingly, that was a clear by the North Korean yeah. defender there that ended up looking like a shot by Lundberg, but she just deflected it. She forced it, but John definitely touched it. Here's Svensson. Victoria Svensson with a game's only goal. And plenty of scoring opportunities along with it. Schuster can't get around that defender. Gonna come back towards the halfway line. Sweden wins it again in the air. Intended for Hanna Lundberg. And that's gonna be cleared away. Out it goes. Into Young is trying to clear it out with the flex off Sweden. North Korea with a throw in near the halfway line, 77th minute. Benson with a touch up and headed for Mostrom. He's coming all the way back. North Korea getting it back. Holding up play, that's Chang. 19 is Tian Okri. And another pickoff. This is Bankston up for Svensson. Lundberg making a run as well. 
Benson using her strength and skill there, but then loses possession. And North Korea will play it to the flanks. That's O. Holding. Can run O. Plays it back. Song inches forward. Picked off. That's Larson. Quick counter into space. Lundberg still flying down that left side. Superbly conditioned athlete, Hanna Lundberg. And as a front runner, you never know what surface of the foot you're going to come up with for a shot on goal. And look here. It's the cleats. The sole of the foot, Lumber just, again, we talked about the heart that she has and plays with. She says, anytime there's a ball in and around my space, I'm going to get something on it. Thanks. For Mostrum. Money Mostrum, 28-year-old veteran, trying to beat two North Korean defenders, and she succeeds in getting a free kick for her side. 2001 Swedish Player of the Year, Molly Mostrum, also plays on Hanna Lundberg's club side. Here's Mostrum working so hard. Two defenders here just trying to keep the ball alive. Ends up getting a foul called in her favor. We're dangerous, the, dangerous free kick area. We're in the captain's armband since Anderson went out. Marlene Mostrum. Kristen Bingston with his free kick. Two in the wall for North Korea. Bingston drives it across. Schustrom tracks it down. And can Bankston save it? No. Close. But apparently the entire ball was out. Well, in our comparison between Svensson game one, to which he's done the seven shots and a goal. Had a goal in this one today. Jin, no shots today. Johnson was coming off the line. Oh, that was dangerous. Kumsukri has to be watched right to the very end. And Sweden gets lucky again, in my opinion, here. This is a beautiful ball bending to the back post. Miscommunication there. Look. Johnson's trying to say, should I come or should I not? And she gets kind of caught in no man's land and gets lucky. North Korea with hope on it. Pushing it forward. Sent back by O. Intercepted. Mostrom. Svensson taken down on the foul is called. Victoria Svensson with the only goal in this one. Hit the 80 minute mark. 80 gone. 10 left. Can Sweden hold on? They're not holding on like they were holding on before because lately they've been picking up in terms of the attack. The momentum shifts here lately. Here's the long one for Lundberg. She couldn't get to it. And North Korea will clear. Lundsukri taken down by Sarah Larson. And the obvious foul is going to be whistled down. We didn't have another sub up. It's the no quit. Look out here in the box. Jonsson came out late. She's out of the net. Still with it. Fighting for it. No. No whistle. And now it's shot wide. She is very lucky. She was lost. And now is down. She may have taken a, a boot there. She somewhere. took some hits trying to make these plays. There's the first chance. Now the second one there. And the third one finally is where she takes a bit of a hit. Actually looks like maybe her own defender hit her a bit there while she was trying to make that save. She just couldn't quite catch a hold of it, but she keeps after it, and her Swedish team organizes behind her as she's exposed there a bit. North Korea does not get lucky on that final chance. In effect, they have an empty net. Granted, there are defenders going after it. North Korea, no real good chances in the first half, but in the second half, they've turned it up. Well, the luck has been in Sweden's favor. They're a crossbar. And this was a miscommunication here by the goalkeeper and the Swedish defender, Larsson. And now on this last chance, interestingly, Jonsson comes out and is down. And North Korea finds themselves with an open net. So Sweden with more scoring chances than North Korea. And Sweden's backup goalkeeper is warming up. Sofia Lundgren, like the USA, Sweden chose to take two keepers. Some teams chose three. 
So they are taking care of Caroline Johnson right now. Our World Cup coverage will be continuing later tonight. Nigeria versus the USA. 7.25 Eastern Time here on ESPN2. Mia Hamm and company. Mia with three assists in game one. Nigeria and the USA, everyone is expecting a physical game based on past history. Johnson is up and okay. It's easy for me to say she's okay, but she seems to be. She's feeling a little bit better that that ball didn't go in. She's nursing a knot on her forehead there. That's what I thought. It was her own defender that got her at the end of that last play. Meanwhile, it's Song's corner because that last shot was deflected out by the Swedes. Song trying to cut it back, and they've gotten clipped. The ball comes across. Flipped away by Sweden. North Korea continuing on here, 84th minute. There'll be some stoppage time put on, so there may be more time left than Sweden wants. Svensson tries to come around on it, doesn't get it all. Lundberg gets more of it. Now you'll see more desperation from the North Koreans. Time not on their side here, and they're down by one as the ball goes out. Some words for the next sub if she comes in. Being Here's North Korea looking to make the turn. There was some holding there. Not a good spot for the foul. Great kick is coming. Loser because Tornquist got taken down there as the North Koreans were trying to hustle to get the ball back into the spot for the free kick. The importance of free kicks. Always a goal scoring opportunity, especially from this close, about 23 yards from goal. Pure free chin over the ball. the referee's whistle. Chin will strike. It's low and it's wide. And an opportunity is wasted. Sweden will have a goal kick. This is an interesting switch that's coming up because Rupquist is just a 20-year-old with five previous caps. And one of them came in game one against the USA, so we'll see who she's coming in for. Might be more fresh legs than tactical at this point. All tackled away. There's Hornquist again. Look how high up she is in the field, but somebody must cover for her. This is all dangerous tackle by Bengston. You're playing with fire there. Bengston up the left wing. Headed up by Svensson towards Lundberg. And Lundberg gets called. She's gotten called for a few of those here today where she was deemed the aggressor offensively. And Lundberg is the one that's coming out. Over Christ. So some fresh legs from Josephine Christ. And Bengston was the player that tracked back here on O. Makes a big, big sliding Plays the ball, but what you were talking about, JP, is it happened in her own box, and that's a dangerous area. You just never know how that's going to be interpreted. She did get ball first, but again, you never know. Here's a ball play through. The fresh legs almost work there. That's Ucris on her first touch. Her very first touch could have resulted in a goal. Coming up for Sweden in the 87th minute. Bengston. Svensson at the byline. Back for Bengston. Wanted to use the left foot. And that cost her possession. Thorncrist up with a long header. And now North Korea will try to put it back into play. The pump from Ree. Blocked by Larson out. Approaching 87 minutes gone here. Highly competitive match as we expected it would be. And a different game 
in game two for each of these teams than we saw them play in game one for a lot of reasons. Here's a long ball off the free kick. Not a down. Torn fist will play it safe. Rather give up the throw in there than the corner. There's North Korea. Larson defending against Chin. That one, I thought it was deflected, apparently not. Just miss hit. So it's a goal kick. And Spencer has had such a great match, and she's taken her half chances finding the back of the net there in the first half. That's been the difference so far in today's match. Spencer with a go-ahead goal, which could be a game winner. We'll find out soon from Lincoln Financial Field in game one of our doubleheader. North Korea and Sweden and Group A. Sweden have the lead. Play it up into the box. Off the deflection, North Korea trying to settle it. Svensson was coming back. Svensson with a one goal, seven shots, three of them on target. But the toughest player, I think, to mark on this field today. Strength, skill, some deceptive speed, Wendy, some balance. She's got the whole package. And she also combines so well with her teammates. You saw Okvis come in, and we were questioning, hey, how do you take Bloomberg out at this point in the match? But we saw why. It was her speed, and it was her fresh legs and enthusiasm. And who finds her? Svensson. She knows exactly what type of run and what type of ball Okvis needs on that play. It's, it's amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm very, very impressed by her. We've got USA Nigeria coming up, but... In between games, Rob Stone and Heather Mitz will get you updated on all that's going on in this 2003 Women's World Cup. Four minutes of stoppage time. That's a lot. Most of that probably for the Jomsen injury and then the substitutions, obviously, as well. Ball third out. North Korea's ball. North Korea's going to be liking the four minutes of stoppage. Larson in the battle. He touched it last. Goal kick. That's important. Any goal kick, any throw in coming up, any free kick that favors Sweden, they'll take their time. Boy, Sweden could really tighten things up, couldn't they, if they hold on to this? Three teams with three points. Of course, the USA could change that in game two. Well, Sweden needs to come out of this match with points. Really helps their cause for making it to the quarterfinals, and we expected that they would come out very focused. They didn't have any other option, and the, the rap on Sweden has been in, in world championships. They just haven't shown up. They've, they've disappointed, and they don't want to be known as that type of team. We just gave it up. North Korea will play it long. We're in stoppage time now. Can Sweden hold on? Can Sukhari broken up? And the way Sweden has played, this would be devastating if they give up a tying goal. Instead, of course, looks for an insurance tally, but she's broken up in the end. That's Drang on the ball towards home. Markland marks up tight. Throw in for home. For Chin, who plays it back. The long ball up. Too long, and Tornquist will let it go to her goalkeeper, Caroline Jonsson. In the first minute of stoppage time, the latter stages. Here's some of that time wasting that we talked about with Jonsson. She just, just obviously doesn't want to get a yellow card for it. That takes a little bit off the clock. Headed down. Benson on the turn, allowed to keep possession. The advantage call. She keeps it alive, and now finally the referee will stop play. There was no advantage after that. So again, more time can be taken up by Sweden. A little gamesmanship here. But in the rules, within the rules, as long as they don't take up too much time. Bankston on it. This from about 30 yards out. Four on the wall. Floated up for Spencer. Almost made it. Mustrum couldn't get that ball up. Oh, on it. Going long for Chen. Not it down. Well done. Over to Tornquist, but it was Hannah Marklin that made that play. Swedish defenders taking turns with some big plays here now. Larson on one side, Marklin on the other. This is Svensson holding it up. Gives it up to Mostrom. Go long. Oh, Quist in the box. Brings it down against two North Korean defenders. Has it kicked away, but she'll take that because she'll have a throw in. 
and more time taken off. We're better than halfway through with stoppage time. Svensson with the lone goal and still looking fairly fresh out there. Svensson testing it down, but now it's cleared away. The torn fist again, getting inside of the forward and then clearing it. This one will roll over the byline for a goal kick. Coach Leifors has really prepared her team well on just a few days here. Looks like a different team. And all North Korea can really hope for at this point is just one more chance. That foul's going against them, whether they realize it or not. Look at Janssen's playing it, but the whistle, whistle blew a long time ago. Well, smart for Janssen to go ahead and continue playing it, just in case. I think she almost had to because the North Korean forward was still going. But they'll bring that one way back. going to make things interesting if Sweden can win this game because they play Nigeria on Sunday. USA can go to the top of the group by themselves if they beat Nigeria as they're expected to. This ball carried off by Bankston. Should be about a half minute to go. Goal kick for Reed. We're down to the last few kicks. Make that the last one. Sweden gets their first win of this World Cup. They beat North Korea. A nice effort, Wendy, from the Swedish team after losing game one to the United States. They came out, backs against the wall, and came out and went after it right away. That's right, JP. They had their backs against the wall, and they knew what they had to do. They hung in there. They weathered some North Korean storms, but it was Victoria Svensson who made the difference. She nets the only goal for Sweden, and it was just on a half chance. A beautiful ball in the box by Andersen. And look at this beautiful volley into the near post. Just absolutely picture, picture perfect. Goals in two straight games for Svensson. When we come back, Rob Stone and Heather Mitz will get you completely caught up on the cup. And our coverage continues on ESPN2 at 725. USA versus Nigeria. Once again, the score is Sweden 1, North Korea nothing. ABC and ESPN, official broadcast partners of FIFA World Cup and Major League Soccer. For the journalists who are covering the world's most challenging sporting event for women. Toshiba is supplying PCs to the Tournament Organizing Committee to help them report the news while it's hot. Toshiba, proud to be supporting the FIFA Women's World Cup as official IT partner. Toshiba. Canon ZR Mini DV camcorders. For video so lifelike, you're not just watching the moment, you're there again. Featuring Digic DV technology for superior color, contrast, and clarity. Digital revolutionized video. We revolutionized digital. Relax, we got supplemental insurance. What are you talking about? With what? Plus they pay you cash. Great, huh? Who does? Aflac. Aflac. Ask about it at work. Welcome back to NFL Football on Parade. Up next, the young guns. Aaron Brooks, David Carr, Dante Culpepper, Byron Leftwich. Are they wearing chaps? Sunday NFL Countdown, presented by Old Spice. Sundays at 11 on ESPN. How about some music? Sure, I've got music choice. Always and forever. Music choice? 80s? R&B and hip hop? Tater Rock? Music choice. Dozens of non-stop music channels on digital cable. Music choice, where music happens.
one new car out accelerated, out handled, and outperformed the competition. Pontiac introduces the new 2004 Grand Prix. Take a drive. Feel the performance that surpassed an entire class of sports sedans. Then get an outstanding value on a 2004 Grand Prix after all available offers. See your Houston area Pontiac dealers. And welcome back to the Women's World Cup studio. Rob Stone alongside Heather Mitz. And this was a must-win game for Sweden, and they did just that win one nothing was this a different Swedish side today than what we saw Sunday versus the States definitely it was nice to see Sweden bounce back after the game the other day they were more physical they won the majority of the aerial batters and I'll tell you what I'll take Victoria Benson on my team any day North Korea on the other hand didn't really look like they were on the same page the whole entire game there will be some clearance drills for North Korea at practice tomorrow <laughs> ugly clearing and even their finishing as well they're creating chances and it's going to set up a very interesting match Sunday between the US and North Korea I think it will. I think it will be a tough game for them. Obviously, North Korea, it's more of a must-win situation for them. So they'll be coming out. Obviously, tough, tough game for them. The USA, big game today. But before we get to that one, right, the U.S. still has a game tonight coming up at 7.25 p.m. Eastern here on ESPN2 as they take on Nigeria from Philadelphia. And we start breaking down the U.S. game a little bit. Again, the starting lineups have yet to be released right now. But Christine Lilly, she had a goal Sunday in the win over Sweden, but it's more than just the goal that shows up. Christine Lilly does, it's, it's a cliche, but all those little things that make a big game for her, right? They, they really add up. And you know, Christine Lilly does not get enough credit. She is a player that in the last game, she was producing offensively for this team, scoring the goal, but you can tell defensively she was getting the job done as well. She was all over the field, and I just think that Christine is one of the best players on this team. She doesn't get enough credit. Now, you played two years of collegiate ball with Abby Wambach at the University of Florida. Abby, really solid doing the things that maybe we didn't expect. We know she's a bruiser. She can get her head in there. She's a goal poacher, but boy, she brought some other elements to the game last weekend. And Abby has come such a long way from college to now. You know, she definitely is one of the best players in the WSA this season. She's really emerged from the first day until now, and I think it's really going to help this team out. She's fantastic in the air. Set pieces, she's one of the players that you have to look for because she's so dangerous. But offensively, she makes things happen for, happen for this team, especially in the three front where she's very, very dangerous. Shannon Box continues to just amaze us all. Three goals in her first three international matches which matches and beats her total for her first 50 WUSA games. And this is from a defensive midfielder. How is she getting into that area to get so many goals? Well, I think one of the things that they were saying is they were going to try to use her more on the corner kicks and the set pieces. Shannon has turned up so big for this team. Someone who they didn't even think was going to be on the roster. Now she's starting and she's making the most of every opportunity that she gets. So Sweden's big win this afternoon creates quite a logjam. Top Group A is now Sweden, the U.S., and North Korea all tied on three points. Goal differential becomes very important. U.S. and North Korea now tied at plus two. Sweden lurking there with three points. They still have Nigeria, a game that they should be able to win this Sunday. So first and second, wide open in this one. How do you foresee this one playing out right now? I mean, if the U.S. does get a win coming up in a matter of moments versus Nigeria, they will book themselves a quarterfinal spot, but not necessarily the top seed in that Group A. Right, and right now, I mean, it's just interesting to see what's going to happen. Obviously, the game for the U.S.A. today, they continue playing like they did it the other day against Sweden. I think that good things will come, especially against Nigeria. North Korea has to win in the next game in order to advance to the next round. Sweden, they play the way they did the day. In the next game, obviously, it's, it's up in the air for anybody. Solid outing by Sweden, but we want to remind you, coming up at 7.25 p.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN2, it's the battle of the number one team in the latest FIFA World Rankings versus the number 23rd, the Super Eagles of Nigeria, taking on the U.S. women's national team, the third all-time meeting between these two. We'll have more coming up in a moment. Lemonade, Mr. Long? Sure. That'll be $15. For lemonade? Well, you got your $2 basic charge. Pourings extra, seed removal, and you do want it cool. Right, Mr. Long? Sound like your cable company? With Dish Network TV from Radio Shack, you get a 30-day satisfaction guarantee. Digital quality RCA equipment and two rooms with a digital video recorder or three rooms free. Dish Network TV. I bet this isn't the end of your price increases. 
Radio Shack. Star premium quality denim. Wrangler. Real comfortable jeans. It's a tough job. Welcome to the Sheriff's Department. And these tough guys. I'm your training officer. If you die, it is my fault. We'll handle almost anything the street throws at them. <laughs> Tammy, officers on duty. A new drama, ABC Sunday, 8, 7 Central. And welcome back to the Women's World Cup studio. Rob Stone, Heather Mitz with you. And hot off the presses. We have the USA starting 11 and three changes from their first game and two of them coming in the back. Catherine Reddick, we, we knew for the most part that she would be in the starting lineup in the back four, but she's playing wide left in the middle. Kate Sabrero, like we talked about, but Kylie Bivens, a bit of a surprise there playing right fullback in the starting slot. Allie Wagner, the other new starter for this 11, but Heather, let's start with Kylie Bivens. Why is she in there and playing out wide right? Well, obviously this Nigerian team is very, very physical. Kylie is going to match that. She led the WSA with yellow cards. So obviously she is a tough defender, 